inquiry into issues of foreign interference, that if we say certain things or if we contradict or deny other things, we could be giving our adversaries tools uh, to actually uh, understand how we go about detecting their um, interference or, or uh, um, illicit ways of engaging to harm Canadians. We know that Justin Trudeau thinks that the budget is going to balance itself. We also know that he doesn't think much about economic policy. But does he read? Hello, I'm Adrian Batra. With me are Warren Kinsella and Brian Lilly. So, Brian, I, I say that in a bit of a pejorative way because the testimony that the Prime Minister had to give before the inquiry into foreign interference, he basically confirmed he doesn't read his briefs. It's, it's why I loved our front page. Uh, too long, didn't read. Uh, and he's not getting long. Memos. <laughs> they showed some of them at the, the commission, and that's how we know he didn't read them. He'd be shown memos that were sent to him, and he would say, well, I didn't see this one. Now, is, is it true that he didn't read, or is this just his cop-out? Because Katie Telford, when she was appearing before the Procedure and House Affairs Committee on this very issue of foreign interference last year, was asked about the Prime Minister getting briefings and reading briefing memos. And she insisted that he absolutely reads everything he receives. Okay, well, was she being super careful with his wor her words and uh, he didn't receive these memos? What he was saying is these important memos on national security and foreign interference were sent to him, but that he didn't read them. He relied on somebody else to uh, read the important parts to him. And then he would still say he didn't remember the, the most important parts about foreign interference. So are you really telling me that you not only didn't read the important memo, but the person briefing you didn't read you the most important parts? Yeah, uh, That's what he wants us to believe. You know, Warren, uh, you've been around uh, some very tricky times when you served in uh, on Parliament Hill and are aware that different leaders are, want to be briefed differently on, on certain matters, for sure. So I suppose that Trudeau didn't want to read it or have it in his hands so he could say at some point I didn't see it. That's possible. But it's strange credulity a little bit that when your foreign intelligence agency tells you that there's a problem with China interfering in our elections on in two elections, doesn't that raise a simple question like how? What's going on? And that's the part I think is so frustrating. Trudeau didn't even have any general curiosity about what was going on. And like, so I'm in, I'm in Jamaica right now where Justin Trudeau travels quite a bit. And like, you know, he's pictured down here uh, quite often reading things. I don't know if he's reading comic books or, you know, his national security briefings. But I mean, the thing that was evident, even from my great distance yesterday at the testimony, is somebody isn't telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Either he does not read memos and he prefers an oral briefing, and some prime ministers are like that. Or like Katie Telford says, he reads everything, quote unquote. And then you have other people from PMO uh, testifying and saying things that made no sense and also stretch credulity, as you say, saying that their concern was Russia after being told by CSIS nearly 20 times over a period of years that no, the biggest problem was China. So somebody is not telling the truth. And uh, Trudeau, Trudeau had a very bad day yesterday. And I think that's reflected in what uh, the public is increasingly thinking. You know, obfuscation is certainly something, uh, Brian, that Trudeau is very good at. Uh, I mean, look, this is the third time since he's prime minister where he's had to provide some sort of testimony in yet another scandal uh, involving his liberal government. But I think Canadians can walk away for those for those that are high information voters that are paying attention to this sort of thing, the fundamental core for our democracy is that we have safe and fair uh, elections, free of interference. Mm -hmm. Can Canadians walk away from this and say that that is certainly the case, considering that we have an election coming in, in a year and a half's time? No, I don't think so, because you mentioned uh, this earlier. Trudeau has a complete lack of curiosity. Um, mm -hmm. The guy who was running the 2019 campaign, Jeremy Broadhurst, was briefed on September 28th, 2019, 
about the concern CSIS had with Han Dom's nomination meeting in Don Valley North that had occurred a couple of weeks earlier. They went to the Liberal Party. They briefed Broadhurst and a couple of others who had proper security clearance. Broadhurst waited till Trudeau was back in Ottawa two days later, goes to the Ottawa airport and briefs him. And Trudeau just gets on the plane and keeps campaigning. He was asked, did you follow up? And he said, well, I believe the party did. And he was like, no, but did you follow up as prime minister, as the leader of the government? And the answer was no. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you see in the testimony time and again that whether it is Trudeau or other politicians or even worse, the bureaucrats that he appointed, they see something going amiss and they just say, well, I don't think this is nothing to worry about. I mean, it's a fire, but do we really have to call the fire department? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, the only <laughs> time they really acted was you had this Buffalo Chronicle story making accusations about a non-disclosure agreement and an affair with a student when he was a teacher. Uh, and that rumor has been around forever. Everyone's heard it. Everyone's emailed us about it and said, why aren't you reporting this? Um, because it doesn't appear to be true. But, you know, that's the only time they act. They mm -hmm. asked Facebook to remove that story. Uh, but when stuff was going on about Kenny Chu and Aaron O'Toole and WeChat, they said, well, it was just in Chinese language uh, outlets, so we, you know, we didn't think too much about it. Oh, what about, um, uh, they tipped off Han Dong that he was being looked at by CSIS. They didn't tell Michael Chong or Jenny Kwan that they were being uh, yeah. pressured and, and uh, interfered with by China. So this is a, a government that looks after the party, not the country. Warren, last word to you on this, consequences. That's what uh, that's what we want to know. What will be the consequences out of this? You know, it will be some time before the final report from the judge comes out and, and, and gives her findings, whatever they may or may not be. Uh, but there are certain aspects of this that just don't sit well with the public, with in, in terms of just the, the process and whatnot. So what, do, from your perspective, what are the consequences here? Well, the consequence is this. Now we know why, before all the evidence is in, now we know why they didn't want to have an actual judicial inquiry. Now we know why he appointed his ski buddy to take a look at this thing. Mm -hmm. Now we know why Dominic LeBlanc dragged his heels for month after month after month. They knew what was going to come out. And what was going to come out is apparently them telling falsehoods, the story not adding up, and clear evidence, already clear evidence in the earliest days of this inquiry, showing that China did, in fact, interfere in the 2019 and 2021 Canadian federal elections, and Trudeau's office knew about it and did nothing. They knew that that was what was going to come out, and that's why they tried to prevent an inquiry from taking place. They were not successful, thankfully. I think this one is going to add to a very large pile, large pile of Trudeau government scandals, mm -hmm. and it's not going to assist them in the next election campaign. That's the consequence. Well, let us know what you think in the comments below. Like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and go to the torontosun.com and hit that subscribe button. You're going to find commentary and coverage there you will not find anywhere else.